Okay, so today I want to talk about um, uh, one of my uh, subscribers asked me the other day if I could show them how to repair a broken jack. Here's a little um, headphone jack off of a circuit board. And as you can see on this one, uh, the circuit traces are completely lifted off the board. The other jacks, you can see how they're wired and they're just fine. So how would you uh, go about repairing something like this when you've got the jack and it's in good shape, hasn't been damaged, but the circuit board has been, and so it's not just as easy as slipping the jack back on there and trying to make it work just for the simple fact that um, it's not going to work after that. So let's talk about that. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the jack itself and I'm going to clean the solder off of the pins. I've got a roll of solder wick here and so it's kind of hard to do with a camera three inches away but just take the solder wick, heat it up and let it wick the solder off of the pins. That's why they call it solder wick because it wicks the solder away. And so there you can see I've, I've cleaned the pins of the solder. They're nice and clean. So the jack at this point will fall right into the circuit board very nicely and as you can see the three pins are through the bottom of the circuit board get it to focus and it's a little bit better they're through the circuit board and ready to be soldered on but the problem is where do you solder them to because the pads have been lifted so we know that the um, let me get a pointer we know that the first pad solders to this common ground trace right here and we know that the last pad is uh, the same it's out to the ground trace but the center pad that's the one that they're involved uh, with a signal on this one comes from this pad over here and connects to this so let's talk about repairing that okay so here's the first item you're gonna wanna have is a hot glue gun this one is probably 20, 25 years old. It served us well. Why replace it if you don't need to? So I'm gonna plug that in. These take about 10 or 15 minutes to warm up. Okay, next I'm gonna take the circuit board and I'm gonna take this fine tipped little screwdriver and I'm just gonna scrape through the coating on the circuit board down to the bare copper and I want to make sure it's actual bright shiny copper because as you can see there's a little bit of a white residue on it the solder won't take to the white residue very well so I'm going to do that on both sides here so you don't want it to look hopefully you can see that that has a white residue on it. You can see that the one on this side is nice and bright and shiny and this side has a white residue. Solder won't take to that very well so you need to scrape all the way through until it's bright and shiny. You could use a wire brush. I prefer to use just a little screwdriver tip. It does a very good job. Let's see if we can look at that now. Hopefully it'll focus. Yes it looks very nice. And now with this other trace, it's completely broken off, but luckily there is a pad right there, and that's going to come in very handy. So we can just wipe off that old dust, and you can see the work there. It looks very nice. Next, I'm going to do the same thing all the way around this. I like to make little swirl marks in it because it seems to help the solder stick a little bit better to an uneven surface. That looks great. Let's hold it up to the camera. You can take a look at it and see how it looks there. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pre-tin this, which means I'm just going to add just the smallest little amount of solder to it. And make sure it sticks. 
Don't want to use more than I absolutely have to. You can see where the solder sticks. It's only sticking to the part that I've really roughed up good. Even though you can see copper around it, it's not sticking there because of that white residue. So that looks really good. Next, I'm going to take my uh, wire, my acid brush, and a little acetone. I'm going to clean it really good. Especially important that you clean it on this side because this is the side that the hot glue is going to be sticking to, and we don't want any residue over here. There we go. Now I'm going to take the jack. And I'm just going to really quickly hit it with the acetone because this is plastic and acetone is corrosive to plastic. It will melt ever so slightly, but it's going to get rid of any impurities and any oils on the jack so that the hot glue will stick good to it. Now one thing to be careful of, this jack is open. As you can see, I can stick the screwdriver way down into the jack there. So that means if hot glue gets out in there, if it gets down in there and you try to plug your, your uh, earphone or headphone jack or plug into the jack, it won't make it. So we want to make sure that we use just the lightest little amount of hot glue. And what I'm going to do is just lay just a little track down here and here, and then I'm going to put the plug into the board. So let's do that now. Okay, so hopefully I can get just the tiniest amount to come out. Just a little bit there, and just a little bit there. Now if I don't get too much in the way, you can see I've got just enough kind of oozing out of the sides of the jack that it's going to hold it nice and solid. In addition, I'm just going to squirt a little bit down to the back of it here and I want to reinforce the sides just a little bit. So I'm going to add a little bit more to the sides here. Oh, that was a lot. A little more than I anticipated, but we'll just go with it. Now I'm just going to let it set. I'll have to trim the excess off with a razor blade after it cools off. Okay, so I've let the glue dry a little bit. It's nice and solid. You can see the little stringies there. I can pull that away, but the jack is on there really solidly. Now I, I can't, wow, I can't even budge it if I wanted to. It is on there good. So let's go ahead and uh, wire the bottom now. Okay, now for this, I've got a roll of hookup wire. It's 26 gauge uh, hookup wire and it's solid. And uh, I like this wire because it normally uh, strips very easily. I can strip it with my thumbnail. And there it is, one solid piece of wire. It works very nicely. Always helpful if you pre-tin the wire. And what that means is to get a little bit of solder on your tip and add it to the wire. I'm doing this one-handed. So next I'm going to just add the solder. And I'm going to tack one end of the wire down there. And hopefully you can see this on the camera, but what I like to do is take it and completely wrap it around, pull it tight, and then I'm going to attach it to the other side over here. Use a little bit more solder now because that's going to hold it. It's a good solid bond. I'm going to go back and touch up my first joint, and then I will just solder the pin to it. Next, you can take a little razor blade, just score it, it breaks right off. Now for the second pin, a little bit harder on this one, but still the same thing. I'm going to pre-tin it. In fact, I'm going to add a little bit of solder to that pad right there. I'll clean that up in just a minute. Same thing is going to happen. I'm going to take it and I'm going to wrap it 
around as best I can here with the camera right in the way. This time I will take it and trim it. So this is our signal pin and I'll take it and solder the center pin into position. There we go and I'm just going to touch that up because I don't like the way it looks. That looks much much better. And now for the third one. Basically like steps one and two, just lather, rinse, repeat. So I'm going to take the solder once again. I'm going to pre-tin my lead here. So the end of it's ready to go. And next I'm going to turn it because I want to kind of hook it from behind. And I'm going to wrap it all the way around. It's very hard to do this with a camera, right? in the way. And we'll take it and we'll do a complete 360 wrapped around. And I'm going to tack it back down on that end. I don't like the way that end looks, so I'm going to fix it. And then I'm just going to fill it with solder. If you wanted to, you could just dump a whole lot of solder on it right now. And it would just fill up that gap. Lastly, go ahead and clean the flux off the circuit board. Like I said, I like to use a little bit of acetone to do it. I think it works out very well. No contamination after that. There we go. And so that is one way that you can replace a jack on a circuit board where the copper traces have been lifted completely off the board. And this jack is going to be stronger and last longer on this board than the original jacks were because they don't reinforce them. So if you really wanted to, you could take one of the other jacks and with your acetone just clean it, clean the three sides of it, and go ahead and take your hot glue gun and just add a little bit of hot glue to all three sides of it to hold it down. Remember the word hot means the hot glue is hot so don't touch it to your finger because it will burn your skin. Alright I hope you enjoyed this video on how to repair a little jack on a circuit board where the copper traces have been totally lifted off of the circuit board. Once again, with your help, we can keep these things out of the trash and out of the recycle bin. I appreciate your views, your comments, and your supports. I try to answer as many as I possibly can, but like always, I can't answer every single one. You can follow me on Twitter at NorCal715. Everybody have a great day. Bye-bye.